Hey everybody, um, this is my submission for Christian Henson's sample contest. I ended up going with the BNS squeak sample that he provided. I was going to try to do both, I just didn't have enough time this week. Okay, after I chopped up the audio, I threw an RX denoise plugin on it, just to get some of that background noise out. And then to help even more with the background noise, I used the channel strip plugin where I threw a high pass filter, and then also used the expander in there as well trying to cut out as much of that noise as possible. Then I printed all that audio onto a new track. Then after that, I threw it into Melodyne, did some pitch correction on the samples, and then printed them again. So after pitch correction, I ended up with three samples of A sharp seven and three samples of B seven. I brought it into Ableton to mess around with it some more. So first thing I do is duplicate a sample of one of my A sharp sevens and then I just move it off to the side. For this next step, I needed an even number of samples. Then I take that first sample that I just duplicated and I reverse it. Then I take that reverse sample and connect it to a different A-sharp sample, giving me a fade in, fade out sound. So after we merge those first two samples, we're gonna move on to our next two samples of the A-sharp seven, giving us a B version of this kind of fade in, fade out effect. So after we finish this, we'll have two different versions of our A-sharp seven and this will be more important towards the end of creating this sample instrument. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with our B7 sample set. Then once I'm done merging all those samples together, I'm just gonna consolidate them just to make it easier to move around. Okay, then after that, I threw a ping pong delay onto this track so we can maybe get a wider stereo image of the sound. Then I printed it onto a new track. Then after that, I sent it through a stereo reverb guitar pedal, the Cathedral pedal by Electro Harmonics. So it was at this step that creating these samples got a little bit more complicated. I find that a lot of times whenever you're just using one or two samples to create an instrument with a wider range, it starts to sound a little bit like one of those cheap $50 electric pianos. So instead of repitching the final product, I repitched the samples before I sent them through the reverb. So you end up with a unique audio file for each sample I end up creating. So because our original raw recordings produced two different notes, A sharp seven and B seven, I wanted to re-pitch them in strategic ways so that as you move either up or down the keyboard, you were going to alternate between either the A sharp seven sample or the B seven sample that was re-pitched. So to do this, I made it so that each sample will represent two notes in every single octave. So if we're looking at our A sharp seven, we have A sharp seven, D sharp seven, then down to A sharp six, D sharp six, A sharp five, and then you just keep going down. We did a similar thing with our B7 recording. So we have B7, F sharp seven, B6, F sharp six, B5, and then we just kept going down from there. Whenever we actually start stretching these on the piano roll, it'll end up looking like this. All of the A sharps, we will stretch down to G. Then the F sharp, we will stretch down to E. The D sharp, we'll just stretch down to D. Although I know pitching up a sample is frowned upon because those are right next to each other, I pitch the B up to a C sharp. This makes it so that each sample represents half the keyboard. So the A sharp seven has six notes and the B seven also has six notes. And then from here, we just need to move it into contact. So if you remember from one of our first steps, I ended up creating two recordings for every single note. I did this so at the end we could create a round robin effect when loading these into contact. This makes it so that whenever you press a note, it'll play the sample, but if you press that same note again, it'll trigger a different sample of that same note. Then the last thing I did was crank up the release time to give it a more natural fade out. Okay, so let's take a listen to this instrument. Okay, I hope everybody enjoyed watching how I made this. And thanks again, Christian, for your awesome channel and putting this whole contest together. I had fun. Bye, everyone.